All right, we're going into Goodwill. I remembered my Ikea bag today. We're gonna to find some stuff that we can resell for a profit online. We're gonna focus on men's clothing. That's my game. Thanks for joining. I'm really slow with TikTok today. So we got some work to do. We're gonna have fun doing it. This is what I do for a living. I go to thrift stores, I go to garage sales, estate sales, and even retail stores in their clearance sections. And I find items for cheap and I resell them online on eBay, Depop, Mercari, Grailed, Facebook Marketplace, and Poshmark. What do we got here? Nothing. So thanks for joining. I think this is a good learning opportunity. It's also a good learning opportunity for me because you'll be my eyes and ears. You'll be able to look up items that I can't look up because I'm on my phone, so I can't comp things on eBay to see market value if I'm finding new items. I've been doing this for five years, so we will find plenty of brands that I do know. But every week we find something new still. And I might need your help. I like the vintage vibes on that first shirt. We'll go back to that. Fresh rack coming out. Like the looks of that. Like the looks of that. Stars and stripes. Kind of got some Y2K vibes on this. I don't know that that's worth money, but it's cool. Sometimes we just find cool stuff. All right, let's start. We're going to go right to the XL men's section for shirts, and we're going to get started there. We'll probably do a little bit of hard goods today too. I dabble in that, but I usually save hard goods and electronics and stuff for garage sales. It's kind of better prices, better stuff. I can't get great prices on hard goods here. My day's going great. Thanks, John, for joining. Thanks everyone who's joining on the live here on TikTok. Great place to ask questions, communicate. There's a whole bunch of really smart resellers in the room here. So great place to ask questions, even if it's me, not me that's answering the question. Love this community. If you're watching on YouTube, awesome. Hello, how are you? You can ask questions too. I'll get back to all those YouTube questions. And I appreciate wherever you're watching. Same name, Chris at Peak. That's on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. My three-year anniversary of creating content for other resellers was Monday. My first video was June the 25th of 2020. Trisha, you got this. It's weird enough to be cool. I am 21st. Nice. Leslie's in the house. What's up, Leslie? Leslie's creating some curriculum for new resellers, going over everything, how to look up market value, all that. So Central Illinois reseller, give her a follow. She's coming out with this curriculum. She knows her stuff. She's been doing this a long time. Awesome member of our community. Give her a follow. She's already started putting some of that content out, kicking off her curriculum. It's specifically designed for people who are just getting started. So if this is new to you, or you're uh, kicking and screaming your way through your first few weeks or few months, if you wanna check out Leslie's content she's got coming out. And that's Central Illinois Reseller. We might have our first hit of the day here. What do we got? So we got a Ralph Warren, size extra large. I on normal button-down shirts like this, this is a very normal button-down shirt. I try to stick to the XL or bigger, unless it's got a, like a really cool pattern and it's a size large. This one's got a white kind of base color to it, so it's gonna be really susceptible to that. Like, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back, but that's the easiest way to, you're gonna find most of your stains right there on that collar. It's a dead giveaway for how old a shirt is. And if the, if I find stains and wear there, I'm gonna find it in other spots too. It's a nice, easy place to look too. LL Bean's a brand that I do pick up sometimes. This one's a little worn out too. It's got some stains. I stick to bigger sizes than this. This is an older tag too. Uh, it's like a Y2K tag. So you could call this a vintage LL Bean. Uh, it doesn't have any vintage vibes though. So although I would list this as vintage, and I might even put Y2K in the listing if I picked it up. The, it doesn't have any vintage vibes to it, so it's just not going to sell as well as you might think because it looks just like a new L.L. Bean shirt. So 
when people are looking for vintage stuff, they're just not looking for like plain Jane, looks just like the ones that came off the rack or came out of the factory today kind of thing, if that makes sense. Are red shirts better sellers or does brand top it? Uh, I would focus less on the color um, and more on brand size, material, and pattern. So like a stripe is better than a solid. Here's another uh, XL Ralph Warren. It's got the pony on the chest, which for me, I'm not picking it up. I'm not even considering it without the pony at this point. They just don't sell well. It's a button down shirt. And we're gonna check this collar too. That collar looks okay. So we'll throw this in the rack. All these items will get a second check from me before I check out when I have two hands free. One hand is you and the phone, but this one looks like it's in pretty good shape. I'll list this for about $21 plus shipping. I've sold this very same shirt uh, probably a dozen times, same color, same pattern. Nothing fancy, bread and butter item, not a super fast seller. Here's another Ralph Warren. This one isn't as good to me because it's a plain red color. These just don't sell as well as a pattern. Not that that pattern's a killer, but um, this is okay but it's worn out, it's faded. Somebody's not gonna want that shirt. It'll sell, I could list that for $14 plus shipping and somebody will buy it, but all these shirts will cost me $4.99 plus tax, so not enough, uh, not enough margin there. Here's a brand I never pick up, but Pearl Snaps always catch my eye. I'm not gonna pay for this one, it's five bucks. It's also worn out, but it's a no-name brand, but Pearl Snaps and it's flannel. You can make an argument for picking up that shirt if it was like a buck or two. But it's obvious I wouldn't pick it up for five if it was in good condition, but it's also not in good condition. Do you have a video of you packing a TV, one of the old version ones? I do. Uh, do I? I think so, like way back <laughs> in the library. You might just search on TikTok, search Chris at Pete TV and see if one comes out. I have sold them before, I just don't remember if I made a packing video or not. But you can search TikTok. The TikTok search has got a lot better. Do you even thrift, bro? What's up, Nick Smith? Thanks for sharing your very first video. That was really cool. Here's a vintage Nautica. You could make the argument for picking this up because it's got some vintage vibes to it. You know, that thick stripe kind of color blocking. Got the sailboat. It's a big size, it's an XL, but it's not even worth considering because it's got that ring around the collar. That's pesky, that's tough to get out. I'm good at getting stains out, but it's time consuming and a stain like that's a tough one. I do pick up some things from this brand, like maybe one tenth of 1% of what I find from this Alexander Julian colors, but I don't know, this is kind of cool. It's like a Y2K tag, it's a heavy cotton. I don't know, I think for five bucks, it's probably a pass. If you can get this at like two bucks, something like that, find it at a garage sale, I think it's worth selling. Probably get 15 or 18 bucks for it. If you have questions about certain things and I'm just ripping right past, feel free to slow me down, stop me, ask questions. I'll do my best to pay attention to the chat while I'm ripping through here. I'm here to teach. I'm also here to make some money too, but do you have a video? Uh, thank you, I've been watching your videos. I'm an eBay reseller as well. Awesome, uh, mommy to Madeline, mommy to Madeline. Hi mommy, hi Madeline. Now this is actually cool. I don't pick up a lot from this brand, but it's always beyond the brand. We talk about there's certain things from brands that I will pick up that I pass on otherwise. Look at this Echo Unlimited hoodie. So what I like about this is the huge, huge spell out with the logo on the front. That's what you're looking for in something like this, which is like a streetwear brand. I like the contrast uh, pocket here on the kangaroo pocket. I like the contrast cuffs too, and the contrast hood. This has got a cool look to it. If it has a back hit, that would be even better. No back hit, but it does have a back stain. <laughs> does that count? Let's see if that's like a stain stain or if that'll come off. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna mess with that. Stains tend to travel in packs too. So even if I were able to get that one out, I'm gonna get that home, I'm gonna blast it with the photo lights and uh, I'm gonna find other stains. But I would pick this shirt up for sure at five bucks. 
Um, it could easily be like a $25 piece right here plus shipping. That's what you're looking for in Echo. If that had a small spell out, a small logo, I'm not picking that up. But there's a lot going for that one. Big, big spell out, big embroidery, contrast pockets and contrast hood. That's a cool hoodie. But it is also Stain City, which is just not a not a place I want to visit. Those colors are popping. Do you have a research of which brands are worth picking up or just watching your lives? You can watch the lives. I also have over a thousand videos of different items that I pick up and sell over the years too. So if you spent a couple hours just watching, you'll realize that it's less about brands and more about the, the whole formula of brand slash style slash size slash pattern. Did I say pattern twice? Slash material slash condition, by the way. This collar is worn out on that XL polo. Everything needs context. That's why I think videos are your best teacher rather than some sort of document or spreadsheet or something like that. Context matters in this stuff. Because I do pass on a lot of Wranglers. I'm probably going to pick this one up. And why? It's pearl snaps. I do really well with these. It's a bigger size. It's got, some, see the shimmer? It's got like some silver. See that silver? Size XL. It's 54% cotton, 45% poly, 1% metallic, which is that nice silver little hit in it. Love pearl snaps. That's probably, uh, I'll list this for probably 23 bucks plus shipping because of the size pattern conditions actually really nice too i don't typically pick up this brand key probably donated by the same person xl pearl snaps nice pattern i don't know i have a pair of key dungarees which is an old pair of climbing pants that i used to wear that don't fit me right now but it's not a super valuable brand but i feel like in that pearl snap it might be like a 15 to 18 dollar piece and that is in crispy crisp condition what's up frankie does the trend of larger sizes selling better hold true for women's clothes too? Yes, because you're just talking about a supply issue. It's not necessarily more demand up there in those larger sizes. It's that there's less supply available. So even with less demand, there's so much less supply. So it's that intersection of supply and demand. That holds true both for men's and women's for sure. In certain brands, it's even more so than others. You know, there's, there's some nuance to it. Hey, Frankie. Cass is here, what's up? Cass is like at the, the front end of her reselling business and she is crushing and she's sharing her journey. I love it. You with Eric today? Eric, I'm gonna be with Eric in Greenville, South Carolina tomorrow. We're gonna to be drifting together. We'll probably do our first live at 9.30 a.m. on TikTok tomorrow, 9.30-ish. So we got a small little section of suits and blazers here. If I was just gonna look at one or two items first, which ones do you think I'm gonna look at first based on what we see here? Sorry about your experience at the bins, Cass. I don't really, I don't bins. It's a great place to make money and I respect people who do it. I just don't bins. All right, so we got a Brooks Brothers suit here. We weren't allowed to look over anything we had to grab and go. Very strange. Um, I feel like I've passed on this before. Yeah, I have, because it's got holes in it and stuff, and they won't do any kind of sale on this. It'll be, the suit will be 10 bucks. You can see here, shirts are four, suits are 10. So they'll never do a sale on this. They don't do, uh, at these Goodwills, the Goodwills in Northwest North Carolina, they don't do sales. So this will be here with the holes in it and it will perpetually be $10. They'll never lower that price. So they're never gonna sell it. That suit will stop me for months. I'll keep coming across a Brooks Brothers suit with a nice pattern. I'll be like, ooh, oh, nope, holes. That's the shame about them not doing sales here is they don't get rid of inventory like that that no one's gonna pay full price for. Am I allowed to fly a drone around at the bins to look for stuff? Andrew, you can do whatever you want. I like the name change, brother. Usually I fill the cart, go to the side and sort. I got kicked out for doing that. Oh my gosh. Imagine kicking out someone who wants to spend money at your uh, establishment. Doesn't sound like a really smart way to do things. 
So here's a camel hair. You can tell it right off the bat. It's that nice soft, I don't know how to describe it, camel hair pattern. There it is, 100% camel hair. It's a size 40R Joseph A. Banks. For me, what I look for in Joseph A. Banks, it's a very mediocre brand, mediocre at best. So what I look for is a confluence of three things, four things really, it has to be in perfect condition. This one's not, you can see that hit right there. Um, it has to be a material that's unique. And in this case, camel hair, which is a low supply, harder to find item for people when they want it. There's not many of them listed. And I'm looking for a bigger size too. And unfortunately this is a 40R, which is like a men's medium. Um, I might pick it up anyway, cause camel hair is a really good seller for me. But that hit right there makes it a no go. This would cost me, I think $6.99 is what that would cost. But if that didn't have the hit there, and especially if it was a big size, that would be a good pickup. You'd probably sell that in the 35 to 39 plus shipping range. Here's a bank suit. I pick these up sometimes. Suits have a better sell through rate for Joseph A. Banks, especially if you can get that big size, a unique pattern and a good material. Here is just all basic. 43R is about a men's size large. Um, the pattern's okay, um, but it's just like 100% wool. It's a very common item. It's a nice suit. It's just a very, very common item, so I'm gonna pass on that. This is something I look for all the time in suits and blazers is seersucker. That's that material, see how it's kind of bumpy? That's seersucker. This is not a great brand in Nautica, and I'm seeing some kind of wear and light stains on it, like light kind of yellowing. But I do look for seersucker. That's one of the first things that jumped off the rack to me was I saw this camel hair as soon as I walked over here and I spotted this seersucker and those were the two that I knew I was gonna have interest in. Unfortunately, neither one of them stack up right with the full formula of size, brand, material, pattern, condition. Sorry you had that experience, Cass. Vote with your dollar, don't give them your money. Imagine treating a customer that way, somebody who wants to give you money. <laughs> don't put obstacles in front of your cash register, y'all. Make it really easy for people who have money to give you money. It's a 44R. I don't typically pick up saddle bread. If this was like a size 50R with this pattern, I'd probably pick it up for seven bucks, but that's more of a size large not big enough 48 i might do 46l i might do 50 i would probably go on that saddle bread it's a mediocre brand so a mediocre brand i'll still pick them up if the rest of the formula works out Uh, Nat Nass can be a good brand, yeah, if the rest of the formula works out. So you're looking for 100% silk, you're looking for nice patterns, um, and particularly the bigger sizes do better. The smaller sizes are kind of tough in Nat Nass, unless it's got a really cool pattern. But yeah, you're looking for silk, big size, cool pattern, and of course a good price on it too. Five bucks would be a good price. be honest with you most brands are not a hundred percent pickup because you got to pay attention to the rest for the for, rest of the formula some brands are a hundred percent pickup for me like a mizzen in maine a filson in arcteryx that's a hundred percent pickup brand pick up anything any size any pattern any material nat nast is not a hundred percent brand it's not an all-in brand so the formula still matters When you first start reselling, when I first started reselling, I was just focused on brands and that's fine. Helps you make mistakes and learn and grow. But it's about learning that formula. It's kind of a cool shirt. It's a size small long sleeve. I'm gonna pass on that. What do you think on the Brooks? Shoes, like the Brooks running shoes. 
just depends on the, the model. Uh, every brand in shoes has low end models and high end models. So Brooks is a good one to look out for. You just gotta comp the model. Every shoe has a model number. I'm wanting to find Filson right now on my wish, 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 wish list. That's a great one to find. How much you think I could list for? List what uh, Brooks go? I, I'd have to comp it. I, off the top of my head, I'm not going to give you. I'm not going to make up a number. For the amount of time that you just spent writing that information into this chat, you can enter that into eBay, and you can get sales history over the last 90 days for that item. up some of these I like the long sleeves better than the short sleeves it's just a better sell-through rate but the condition on these is so often messed up so the collars are usually messed up in that case it's kind of got a rough collar and these vents these V's are often messed up it's got solid V's collars a little messed up yeah, I'm gonna pass on it because of the collar. So there you go, you got the comped price there for you, Jess, 49 to 79. So you have all the information you need to, to set a price based on your business model. Are you the fast nickel or the slow dime? So that tells you, are you gonna price low in the market or high in the market? Fast nickel, slow dime. You see the range. So now it's your choice. Everyone's got a different business model. I can list at the higher end of that range because I cross list on six platforms. I have really high quality photos. I have a good seller reputation on six different platforms. And I have storage to keep items if they take, you know, three, four, five, six months. Here's a nice item. This might be a pickup. So we got an LL Bean. This is an older tag with the two, two trees, probably like Y2K-ish tag. It's a size large, tall. These tall sizes are great sizes to look for. Again, it's just low supply, and this is a flannel. It's got a little bit of wear to it, but it's also like a Y2K LL Bean flannel in a good size. We're gonna pick this up. We're gonna list this for like 28 bucks plus shipping. And that'll be cross-listed to six total platforms. Okay. We're getting squeezed out of this one. And we're gonna adjust. We're gonna go to another aisle where there's space. We'll go to the short sleeve shirts and we'll start at extra large. So starting at extra large because the bigger sizes just tend to do better in most brands. Right off the bat, we got another possible hit. It's an LLB, nothing fancy, short sleeve, lightweight cotton. So if this is a size large, I'd probably pass on it. It's like a $15 shirt, but it's an XXL tall, which is a great size. This collar makes me nervous. And it's a pass because the collar's got some ring around the collar. This otherwise would have been a, a good pickup, probably a $20 shirt right here, especially short sleeves right now are like right in the middle of the season. So that would be, that's part of my formula too, is the season. Bummer on that though, ring around the collar. I do pick up some king sizes and I actually might pick this one up. So uh, what I'm looking for in king size is a really big size because this is a big and tall brand. So I'm t I typically say 4XL tall and bigger is really what I look for in king size because the XL is actually a small shirt for king size. It's a, it's a big and tall brand, but I love the pattern on this. It's short sleeve. This is perfect for the summer. 3XL is an okay size. So it's the confluence of that. It's the pattern. It's the fact that it's in season with the short sleeves. It's below my normal cutoff of 4XL, but I love this pattern for the summer right now. Um, not big money on this shirt. I'll expect 16 to $18 plus shipping on that shirt. And it's in season. If it was November, that would be a harder decision for me. I'd, I'd probably pass on it, to be honest with you. But we're right in the middle of the season. So 
Clothing's a very seasonal thing. All things sell all year round, but when you're talking about a mediocre brand like King Size, mediocre brand short sleeve shirt is gonna sell really slow in the winter time. If it's a premium brand short sleeve shirt, that'll sell year round really well and for a good price. This will slow down because it's mediocre. Another example of that would be just a cotton LL Bean short sleeve. That's gonna slow way down because it's a mediocre item with a ton of supply. So you're gonna see those sales slow down in the winter time. What do we find so far? I think there's like four items in there. The whole recording, we'll put this all up on YouTube tomorrow morning if you wanna check out the whole thing. How are you, Tiege? Thanks for jumping in for the second time today. Surf's Up Finds is in the house. What's up, Surf's Up? Brad John. GG's in the house. Hey, GG. What if that were a solid color shirt for that king size, Brandon? If this was the same exact shirt, short sleeve, 3XL, king size, just plain blue, I'm leaving that one behind because it's just a supply thing. When it comes to like a pattern like that, maybe one other person or two other people will have that same exact shirt and that same pattern listed in that size. You see what I mean? Whereas if there's a, just a solid blue, somebody could find a bunch of solid blue ones. I picked these up, especially in the summertime. Brooks Brothers Performance Polo is a mediocre inventory item. So meaning high supply item. So it's hard to compete unless you lower your price or have better photos or whatever. But this is stained, so I'm gonna pass it. But in the summertime, these, these sell really well for me especially if you're pricing competitively. I see yellow color popular, does that sell? Um, if color is part of the formula, it's not one of the bigger parts of the formula. Um, you know, the brand, the size, the material, and the pattern are all gonna be more important than the color. Um, but the color does have an impact. To me, in most brands, yellow is not gonna be a great color, but that depends. You know, certain brands, yellow would be more on brand. If you find a yellow LL Bean, that's not really on brand for LL Bean. LL Bean wants more muted colors, earth tones, you see what I mean? Whereas if you were buying something like a streetwear brand, you might be look, you know, yellow might be better because you know, it'd be on brand to be bright and uh, bold. Does that make sense? But just generally speaking, across the board, yellow is not one of my favorite colors to pick. Ariat t-shirt. So they're gonna want, they're not gonna price this like a t-shirt because what this Goodwill tells me is if it has a seam on the side like this, if it has like a stitching on the side, then it's not technically a t-shirt. That's what they say. I never heard anything like that in my whole darn life. But so that even though this is a, a t-shirt by any normal person's uh, estimation, they don't consider it a t-shirt. So this would be $4.99. If it was a tee, it'd be $2.99. I don't know if an Ariat tee is uh worth selling. I've never found an area t-shirt before. I love the pattern. It's a size XL. But I love that hit on the front. Very on brand for area. Area it's one of my favorite brands to find. Shirts, uh, shirts, boots, especially boots. Jeans are good ones too, but boots, area boots are awesome. Area jeans are awesome. Shirts are okay. They're pretty good too. <laughs> what a great shirt this is. Um, is anyone interested in this shirt right here? This is like, I'd buy this for me or for my wife if it fits. It's a size 3XL. It's on a Delta Pro weight tag. So kind of more of like a boxy fit traditional style tee. That's just a piece of fuzz. Looks like it's in great shape. If anyone's interested in this, if a 3XL tee is your speed, I'll throw it in the cart just in case because that's just an awesome t-shirt find anything at Plato. I don't think I have a Plato's around here. If I do, I've never been. But Plato's is a great place if you have one local to go and source at. If you can time the sales and stuff right. You'll have to pay up for some items, but you can find some home run stuff there. I have sourced at Plato before in Florida. Here's a Southern Tide. I'd pick this shirt up. Especially this time of year, this will be a good seller. It's a nice color, it's a nice summertime colorway, but it's all wrecked up. It's all pilled. It's got a couple holes in it. I thought y'all were going, nope. I don't even know 
where the closest one would be. Our Goodwill has 100% cotton and short sleeve with no logos. Interesting. Brienne's here. What's up, Brienne? Did you get that printer hooked up? It's okay if you didn't. Snappy D got a, a free spreadsheet a week ago, and she hasn't even used it. here a little bit feel free to slow me down if you see something like hey what about that ask me about my ship what in the world is that am i missing the joke here what is the joke there there's an umbrella there's handcuffs Tuesday, everybody. I do this every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Got started late today. I could not get TikTok to work. I don't know. I restarted the app probably seven times. I restarted my phone twice. Finally got it up and running, but it would not connect. But we're here. We made it work. I was worried it wasn't going to work at all. Hard Rock Cafe. I pick up some of these, but not that one. Oh, it's like a UNC shirt, right? Yeah, it's like a UNC shirt. Interesting. Ralph Lauren Polo made in the USA. Good pickup. Um, yeah, probably. Um, big formula, condition, size. Um, pattern, color, all that stuff's going to matter too. If I were you, if I saw that, I would comp it for sure and see whatever you have based on the pattern size and all the material and all that. See what it's going for. But that would be one worth slowing down and looking up. Hard to say without looking at the item. There's more nuance to this than a lot of people give it credit for. TikTok doesn't tend to be a platform for nuance. But we try to get as much nuance in there as possible. That's a cool shirt. <laughs> Math joke shirts. Stir the pot. What's that? Better South, better soul. I don't know what that is. So over it. That's funny. The t-shirts are funny just to go through, you know? Skyway just got off. Skyway just got off. Okay, wait, hey, finally caught your life your thing. Hey, Katie, thanks for joining. Thrifting, thrifting, thrifting. It's Tuesday, it's one o'clock. This is what I do. We're here in Hendersonville, North Carolina. This one's about 15 minutes-ish from my house. I haven't been to this store it's been four weeks since I've been here. I usually come every two weeks, but on that schedule, I was away for that week, so we skipped that one. This is one of my Tuesday regulars. It's fairly well stocked. They have been stocking as we're working here today. Most of the Goodwills around here, they're having a real hard time with staffing, so they're not stocking consistently. They'll have big lines at the cash register. They still haven't figured out the whole staffing thing three years into the quote-unquote pandemic era, but they're pretty well stocked today. The one thing that they don't do well at these Goodwills is they don't do tag sales, so a lot of these items that no one's going to pay full price for at five bucks, they'll never go on sale. They'll just sit here until they sell or until they rot. They rot and fall off the hangers, unfortunately. That would make these thrift stores so much better because the more of this stuff that they can sell that's no-name brands like Craft & Borrow with a rough collar that no one's ever going to pay $5 for, it would be great if they just did like a tag sale 50% off or 75% off. Somebody might come in here and pay like a buck twenty-five for the shirt. They're not going to pay 5 so it'll never move off the rack. And if that shirt never moves off the rack, they can never replace it with something better. So that's kind of the unfortunate part of a no-sale model at a thrift store. 
is that this, some of this stuff I'll see literally months from now and I'll try to point out a shirt that I come across that, that literally was here like in 2022. I'm sure we'll come across some stuff like that. Thanks for the follow, Mace Mason. Appreciate that. That crafting barrel shirt was my uniform at Sears. I that's doesn't surprise me one bit. <laughs> if you want it, you can get another one. I thought that was a master shirt for a second there. Did you too? Google's supposed to be helping people to find jobs. Yep. And if they increase their sales by moving more inventory through here and staffing so that they had like you didn't have to wait 20 minutes in line at the register they'd make more sales and therefore they'd have more money to help people get jobs what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger except bears bears will kill you that's funny what do we got for a tag on that it's an xl i like that shirt it's not gonna fit me if someone who wants that let me know that's a classic Western North Carolina shirt right here. It's bear season right now. The bears are super active. Yeah, I didn't take that Ralph Warren. It wasn't in good shape. It wasn't a good one anyway. It was a red short sleeve, button down, plain. I pass on those. Let me know if you want that one. Found a Miz in Maine earlier. Nice MV Pettit. Appreciate you sharing your wins. Love hearing about y'all's businesses too. This store is close to me, like 20 minutes sick. Middle school me would have snatched up every polo shirt. There you go. I used to wear a lot of polo back in the day. A lot of polo. Polo head to toe. That's a women's Ralph Lauren size XL. I'm gonna pass on this one. Ooh, here we go. Italia. Is the Meowdy shirt still there from last week? That's a different store, Tr uh, Trishy. So this is an example of a really good polo Ralph Lauren. The condition is not great. I might actually get it anyway, because we got the big pony, the three head on the sleeve, contrast collar, stripes across the middle, contrast sleeves too. So just anything that make it unique, unique, unique is gonna go. A, because it's gonna lower the supply, meaning I'm not gonna have a lot of competition in the same colorway, but B, that's what people look for in a brand like Ralph Lauren. They're looking for unique, different, loud. It does have some fading on the collar. I'm gonna pick it up anyway, price it low. Um, if this was in like crisp, crisp condition, I'd probably sell this size XL. I'd probably sell it for um, like 28, 29 bucks plus shipping. But because it's a little worn out, I might even sell it a little bit more than that. It might be like low 30s just because of how unique that pattern is. But with a little bit of uh, wear like this, I might price it lower like 22 bucks and see what happens. I did grab that area at T, 15 to 22, and those are sold comps, Trisha. Nice, thank you for doing that work for me. I'll go by that store, um, if not sooner, and I won't go sooner, I was gonna say if not sooner, I'll go next Tuesday. That said, I might skip it next Tuesday. That store has been so poorly staffed. The racks are like empty over there. I don't know what I'm doing with Polo. We'll pick this, this is a good start. Uh, show her the other cat shirt you found. I think you put it in your cart. Yeah, I did in case somebody wanted it. It's a good idea. What do you think, Trisha? Completed listing. Cool. Uh, we just talked about that, Andrew. The sell price on that, I would probably list it for like... Uh, either like $29 or $32 plus shipping. I'm thinking more like the $32 because of the uniqueness of it. Uh, but because this one's a little oh wore out, I'll probably list it more like $21. Hey, you, know? you don't want the cat shirt, Trisha? So here's an older Gap shirt this might be a what y2k tag it might yeah i think it's a y2k tag so some y2k gap is actually good but this doesn't have any vintage vibes whatsoever it may as well be a new yellow polo right so even though it's vintage it's just not cool it doesn't look vintage you know so sometimes a vintage shirt can just be an old shirt that's an old, a vintage tommy but it just got these are just a really really tough sell 
It's got no real vintage vibes to it. I need an example of a bad one for comparison. Women's XL, plain, kind of in ratty shape too, but. So this would be like, this would sell, don't get me wrong. People will probably buy this single shirt. Like there's probably like 10 of these that sell every day on eBay. The problem is, is there's probably 10,000 of them listed. This one, somebody go look, how many of this exact shirt can you find on eBay right now in a size XL? That's what you're looking for. Supply, supply, supply. Keep the supply low, find unique items, and uh, they sell better for those brands. Cool Star Wars shirt. I know everyone. It's kind of a strange shirt. The ultimate Pi Day, once and forever. Three, fourteen, fifteen. All right, math. We're getting math joke T-shirts today. Oh my God, carnival shirt. You like carnival? They'll sell. These sell. It's not gonna sell with those stains, but somebody would buy this shirt. Are they the exact same size? Yeah. I know it's stained okay. like crazy, but somebody would buy this shirt if it was in good condition. Like a t-shirt with a two-tone. That's that's valuable. I'm honestly asking. I'm trying to learn too. I bike NC. I kind of like that tee, but it's really big and it's really ratty. take carnival cruises every year i would be i'm obsessed with carnival you'd buy that plain carnival and you'd pay good money for a plain carnival two-tone t-shirt like that the mass nerd got married and his wife donated all the shirts <laughs> All right, let's go back. We were in the middle of some long sleeve shirts. And we got ran over a hanger. Oh, look at that. I think this is like really close to where I left off. Look at that. Nice one. Very nice one. Got a wrinkle free area. I have never found a wrinkle free area before. Um, really nice colors on this long sleeve hit on the back um, typically these sell for me in like the $25 plus shipping range but I've never found a wrinkle free one I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing in the area I feel like an area people aren't like it's not really like a dressy shirt it's got a nice feel nice find right there psyched on that so I left off somewhere in here uh, let's see Somewhere is right around here. This rack is tight. Okay, I already looked at those. How much is it? It would be $5 for the area shirt. I do pick up on a very slim occasions of David Donahue. I'm not going to pick up that one. It's more like a 15 to... $15, $16 shirt. It's an American Eagle flannel. Can't meow, no sold one listed six. To, oh yeah, I was seeing if somebody like if somebody in the chat just wanted like a cool t-shirt. Yeah, it wasn't um should have been clear about that. I, that wouldn't be like a online reseller type of thing. That's more like someone's like, holy crap, I need that t-shirt kind of thing. Cause that's what I do, I'll buy t-shirts from here. I'm like, holy crap, I need that. Here, right, nice shirt, I'll buy it. Nice, thanks Ruben. You can shoot me a message over on IG. Cause IG allows pictures. 
pictures and messages. You can't send a picture in a TikTok message. Not at this point. I imagine that that'll come someday as they continue to update this very young platform. Don't your arm ever get tired from flipping through racks? Freaking strong. Strong. <laughs> Rack strong. Um, it does when I, they have the high ones, like these racks up here, where you gotta like reach up high. That, get, that gets exhausting to me. I don't like the high racks. These low ones, they just keep the, I don't know, the technique to it. I, I keep my elbow um, right up my side and I'm just kind of using like the leverage of my, of my side, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Here's a Ralph Lauren, it's a size large. It's got a nice pattern. There won't be a ton of this pattern listed. It's got a pony on the chest. I didn't typically pick up size large Ralph Warren, but I'll make an exception for it if it's got a nice kind of pattern that will be a, I won't have a ton of competition in. I did this last week on a shirt that I picked it up on Tuesday. It was a size large Ralph Warren, nice kind of plaid pattern. And it sold in like two days for full asking price. So, you know, when you look at a lot of shirts over years and years, right? You start seeing patterns that you don't see very often, like this one. You're like, okay, cool. I don't see this one very often. It might sell pretty quickly because I won't have competition in this pattern. So I'm gonna pick this one up. It'll cost me five bucks. I'm gonna list it for 21 plus shipping. In the YouTube video, I'll put up a lot of sold comps up on the screen. So I'll show you a recent sale of the same exact item that I'm picking up. And that'll be on the YouTube recording. That'll be up tomorrow at 9.15, so this exact video. So here's an L.L. Bean yellow. Yellow's kind of off-brand for L.L. Bean. I don't sell L.L. Bean very well in yellow. It's just not what people are looking for on L.L. Bean. If L.L. Bean was this color, it would sell a lot better. But it's a size large. I'm going to pass on that. It's probably a $15 shirt. Here's a vintage L.L. Bean. Now, this is interesting. This is an interesting shirt. So it's a vintage women's LL Bean. It's a 90s tag right there. I don't know about this one. It's a heavy cotton and it's kind of roughed up. I just don't know if this has enough of a vintage vibe to it or too much of the roughness. I think it's probably too rough. But when you're buying vintage, you want to make sure that it has vintage vibes to not just, otherwise it's just an old shirt. What do you sell on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Depop, Grail, and Facebook Marketplace? This guy's got my dad's wardrobe down, bro. I gotta tell Daniel. Thanks for joining, brother, adult. Uh, yeah, if you go to my Depop store, the title on my Depop store is more vintage LL Bean than your dad. So there you have it. Here's some Carhartt t-shirts, really rough shape. I'll pass on those. They're gonna want five bucks for those. They price them like regular shirts and not t-shirts. Old shirt, large yellow, there you go. I love selling FootJoy, especially uh, bigger sizes and uh, nice patterns. FootJoy is a great one. Sold a FootJoy over the weekend. Thanks for the follow. K Money is in the house. Jenny, thanks for the follow. And thanks to Hannah for the follow. Appreciate you jumping aboard. I appreciate all the OGs, folks who are here every single day, every single week. I do this every Tuesday. I go live from a thrift store, door to door, show you the whole process. Try to talk through my thought process on pickups and passes. And every morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, I'm live on TikTok shipping out orders. I'm also live at 10 o'clock. I turn on YouTube and Facebook live on those platforms as well and that's every weekday morning 9 30 at tick on tiktok and then it's 10 o'clock on facebook and youtube so here's another ralph warren this is kind of a really boring shirt solid but it's silk look at that so silk is something you're always looking for in ralph warren size large but that collar is worn the heck out that's too bad so silk and linen in Ralph Warren is basically always a pickup. Even in small sizes, I'll pick up silk and linen, like even a size small, literally. Um, really picky about Ralph Warren, but once you see the silk or linen, it's on. 
what day is the best day to go to the Goodwill. Depends on your Goodwill. Um, the only way to find out would be to go on different days, would be to ask the people that work there when their good stocking days are, when their sales are, that sort of stuff. So every Goodwill's gotta be a little different. They're managed regionally. So my Goodwills are the Goodwills of Northwest North Carolina. That's gonna be different than the Goodwills where you're at. When I lived in Colorado, those were managed by a different group of people. When I lived in Florida, those were managed by a different group of people. And there's actually different management groups within the state of Florida and within the state of Colorado and within the state of uh, North Carolina, there's different Goodwill regions that have different sales, different pricing strategies, different staffing strategies. So I have no idea when the best day to go to your Goodwill is. If I knew, I'd tell you. What's up, Monster Joe? Monster Joe's in the house. How many monsters today? Monster Joe. Do you usually not buy smalls? Smalls is a very tough size for men's. It's got to be a really, really good brand or a really, really unique piece. Smalls tend to have the, are the items that sit in my store the longest. Now this is a really not good brand, St. John's Bay. But this is when you can really kind of need up, nerd out as a clothing reseller. When you can start selling stuff from crappy brands that might actually go, and this might actually go. So we got a St. John's Bay. It's a great size, 2XL tall. Tall sizes are awesome. And it's a denim, which will be a really low supply item. So not many, much competition. And people like their denim shirts, you know what I mean? If this had pearl snaps, that would be a killer. I don't know if I'm gonna pick this up. I'd have to comp it. I'd be curious if some of you in the chat wanted to go ahead and comp a 2XL tall St. John's Bay denim shirt. I bet you, my guess is that there's comps. Not all of them, but I bet you there's some comps that are in the 15 to $20 range for this shirt. Especially if you sell internationally. Do you do whatnot? I don't. Do y'all Goodwills have that one smell? Ours here's a smell. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, my Goodwill has a rewards program where I'm sick. Mine doesn't. We don't do sales or nothing. Connie, thanks for the follow. Welcome aboard. And thanks to the old G's that are in the house. Kind of like Monster Joe and Thrifter, Thrifty Duckies who support me all the time. Really appreciate y'all. And just hanging out and spending time with y'all every day. I'm going to throw this in the cart. I'm curious to see what people say about the St. John's Bay. This is like nerd out central, like clothing reseller. Can you find a really awful brand like St. John's Bay that's very cheap retail, very common in thrift stores, and can you find an item from that brand that will actually resell? I have sold St. John's Bay before for good money. Spot on back, left shoulder. That's, no, it's just a piece of fuzz. Just a piece of fuzz. It'll come right off. Um, good eye, though. I appreciate you looking out. So I have sold a chamois shirt from St. John's Bay before for like 25 bucks plus shipping, something like that. It's a chamois shirt, St. John's Bay, vintage chamois. So this is total geeking out. I'm curious if anybody's over on eBay. There's only a few listed. Any sales results, any solds? That's what I'm interested in. Love Sunday Dollar Day at Ohio Goodwills. Nice. Thanks for the follow. Hobby, I wouldn't pick that up. 8, 18 on June 4th. Thanks for joining the squad. The college, re is that Ethan? Is that the real? That's got to be a fake college reseller. That can't be the real college reseller. That dude's like a celebrity. He's got his own podcast. There's no way. Somebody's trolling me with a fake. That's a fake one. That's not real, Ethan. Ethan, all right, if it's actually the real you, what do I always say to you? What do I always say to you? Only the real Ethan would know. Only the what was something with something silly I would always say to you, Ethan. Only the real Ethan would know. But oh, pardon me. Do you even? It is. It's the real Ethan. Y'all follow the college reseller right now. The dude's he's a legend. He was like OG TikTok. Ethan, go check out my last video if you haven't already. I put up a video. It's my three-year anniversary on TikTok as of Sunday, and I put up a video yesterday with my very first video from June 25th, 2020. And I'm challenging everybody to put up their, their first video. I'd love to see your first video too. Do you resell any ties? I used to, I honestly, every now and again, I'll like look through them um, and I'll look for things like Brioni and stuff. And sometimes you'll find new with tags ones, but um, honestly, I don't really anymore. Yeah, that's the dude that always, that uh, K-Way buys his lunch. Man, I can't get over there. I'm trapped. Uh, everyone go ahead and give 
uh, the college reseller a follow. Um, he hasn't been putting out a lot of uh, content on TikTok, but if you go to his link in his bio, he should have his podcast link, his Instagram links. He's more active on those platforms. Kid knows his stuff, I'll tell you, and I shouldn't call him a kid. He's a, he's a grown-ass man now. He's been doing this a long time. He knows his stuff. Awesome dude, too. <laughs> Big account. Thanks for the follow, Loopy Lou. Content is coming every day now on TikTok. Oh, what, what's the uh, what's the change of heart? Did, did K-Way get into you? Did K-Way get to you? Did he tell you what you finally needed to hear? Content's coming. You heard it here first. The real college reseller. Yeah, Wayne yelled it. Good, good. Because that's what I do. If you're lucky it was Wayne. I would have gotten physical with you. Loopy Lou, no problem. Loopy Lou, do you resell too? Or have a side hustle? Or maybe reselling curious? Thinking about getting going with this? Love to hear about it. K-Rock with those smiley faces. This is me talking smack to Ethan. Ethan's the man. Not a man. The man. Guardians of the Galaxy, the galaxy's most wanted. It's kind of a cool shirt. Wow, oh, it's kind of a cool shirt. Galaxy's most wanted group. I wish this was $2.99 because I just want to buy it for me and rock it. I like this uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Aren't they coming out with another one, a third one? Uh, thank you for the roses, brother. Appreciate that. Super kind of you. A lot of roses. Thank you. Coffee's good. Sipping some right now. K Rock, glad you're enjoying the coffee. That's awesome. Appreciate you. Is that a? Uh, is that Keisha? Is that K Rock? Is it Keisha? Spider Man. Thank you for the follow, Bonnie. Welcome aboard. If you're wondering, I am selling coffee now. Started coffee about six weeks ago. Partnered with a local roastery called Dynamite Roasting Company, and they're roasting Chris at Peak Coffee Peak Blends. Just launched it six weeks ago. I've already sold over 200 bags. It's fair trade, organic. It's a medium roast, a good everyday drinker, not a total coffee nerd. Coffee nerds will appreciate it, but you don't have to be a coffee nerd to drink that coffee. Here's a brand new tag, St. John's Bay. The tag's ripped. I'm going to pass on that. I think I might get that denim one. I know some of you are looking up comps. I might have missed what you said about them. Here's a Wrangler. I usually only pick up Pearl Snap Wranglers. Um, this is a size medium, which is not a great size. It's denim, though. I like picking up denim shirts, if you haven't figured that out yet. St. John's Bay is no-go. Only one sold, 18 plus shipping. Bummer. This, this Wrangler might be borderline past, too. It's a size medium, which is tough. And there's no Pearl Snaps. It's buttons. I like the Pearl Snaps better. On June 4th. Gotcha. Okay. I feel like I can sell that St. John's Bay. I feel like I can do it. Just scammers out on eBay. Are scammers a huge thing? Um, when you first get started, so scammers tend to, to target new accounts that have low feedback scores. And then once you get your feedback score up high enough, they figure, ah, oh, that person's really not gullible. They know the ropes. They're gonna be harder to convince. We'll just move on to somebody else who's got a brand new account. So you'll see it when you first get started. At this point, I mean, I can't remember the last like scam attempt that I got on eBay. They just don't target you when you have a whole bunch of feedback. It's just not gonna work. Um, here's an Eddie Bauer. I'm gonna pass on this unless somebody tells me otherwise. It's a fleece jacket. It's a modern Eddie Bauer. It's a men's large, nice pattern to it. It's just, uh, there's this stuff that sells so cheap retail. It's always on sale and there's so much of it listed online. There is some Eddie Bauer that I'll pick up. I'll pick up some Travex Eddie Bauer and I'll pick up First Ascent Eddie Bauer. Some of it, not all of it. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that was actually a scam, Andrew, to be honest with you. I think the guy was just an idiot, to be honest with you. But yeah, scams aren't, um, that's not really a thing anymore for me. I mean, if, if it was a scam, it was a dumb scam on his part because it cost him shipping in one direction. I didn't return his initial shipping, <laughs> so he lost $5.95 on, if that was a scam attempt. I think he was just a dummy. I think he got the shirt and didn't like it. 
tried to resell it and then just decided that he could return it. I don't think it was a scam. I think he was just a weirdo. Keep out. Hey, can you keep an eye out for 100% winning? I always keep my eye out for 100% winning. Is that the question you were trying to ask? Do you remember asking for? Do you recommend asking for feedback as a new seller? Um, I did when I first got started. It was a long time ago. But I used to, after the item, 30 days after an item was delivered, because that means they can no longer return it if it's after 30 days after the delivery. If they hadn't already left me feedback, I would leave feedback at that point in time. And then I would send them a message saying, thanks for your purchase. I hope you love it. I just left you positive feedback. I hope you consider doing the same for me too. It's a big help for my small but growing business. Something to that effect. I used to do that. Once I got to like 100 feedback, I didn't worry about it anymore. I just sort of um, was comfortable with the idea that maybe 30 to 40 percent of people would leave me positive feedback. I already went through these. I already went through these. I already went through those. I already went through those. Okay, what's left? Just auto mapped my feedback, and I couldn't get. Yeah, so now I'd have uh, feedbacks on automatic. So on eBay. You can set it up and you can just Google it like automatic feedback eBay and the, the first result will be eBay's like how to and they'll walk you through step by step how to turn on the auto feedback. That's all I do. So as soon as somebody buys something and as soon as they pay, it leaves them automated positive feedback from me. So I don't have to think about it. Anything I can automate in my business, um, I do. And as you scale, that'll become more and more important. You're not going to want to like sit there and spend time leaving feedback for each and every person and sending the messages after a little while. Once you get to say like a hundred feedback, you're going to be good to go. People are just going to be like, all right, that person sold some stuff. They've delivered it. People seem generally happy with their uh, performance. Cool. I'll buy from them. But me having a higher feedback than you, it's not really going to be a big deal in the grand scheme of things. Once you're at a hundred, if you're at like five, and you and I have the same price on the same item and the same quality photos, you know, the f if you had five and I have my number, <laughs> yeah, that, they're probably gonna buy from me and not you, but once you get to 100, I don't think anybody's gonna care at that point. Bangor 383 listed, size medium, 302 sold. Most are snaps, not buttons. Appreciate that. One thing you can do, Thrifty Duckies, and you don't need to do this for me. Um, just sharing with you, I don't know if you already know this, you can tell me to shut up. But when you do a search for comps on eBay, if you use the minus symbol, so you put minus and then you put pearl, like minus pearl, it'll exclude any of the results that have pearl snaps. You don't have to do that for me, but just sharing that with you, it's a great little way to get rid of results that are like different than yours, you know what I mean? I was trying to help, but I don't even know where I would put this broken hanger. Oh well. Do you look for women's clothes? I do, I don't typically go over to the women's section except for like the sweaters and jackets section, but I do pick up a lot of women's that end up misracked over here in the men's section. And I do pick up women's at garage sales and stuff, but I don't go, so in this store, this is men's, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven racks. The other side of the store is women's and there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I think there's 19, maybe 20 racks. So we'll call it 20, 20 to seven. <laughs> so there's so much more women's to go through. Um, it would just take forever. 27 listed, none sold. Oh, you went and did it. Awesome, I added it and no matches. Thanks, I didn't know that. Cool, see, you're teaching me. I'm teaching you, everybody wins. I'm gonna put this back. And it's actually in the medium section, so we win. I'm still thinking on the St. John's Bay. The minus trick works on other search boxes like Google, by the way, there you go. I use that pretty regularly in, uh, I'm trying to think of another example. I'm looking at some of my stuff to see like what another example of me doing that would be. To think oh like if a lot of my results were coming up in like a ralph lauren button down shirt and a lot of them were like silk or something like that i can do minus silk and get rid of like those those silk comps so is this, a, is this Asheville, north carolina who cares how many racks there are stay on topic tell us how much these items sell for and not i don't know if you're trying to be nice or you 
what, but uh, I'll do the live how I feel like doing the live, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Uh, thanks for your opinion, but uh, Nina, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. And sizes you sell fine, sell the most. Uh, larger sizes, especially tall sizes, like 2XL tall, are going to do better for you. Hey, love me some Asheville, North Carolina. Me too. It's a great place to call home. We lived here for... Previously, we lived in Western North Carolina between, like we lived in Boone and in Asheville for five years. We moved away and now we moved back in October. It's good to be back. How much do you list per day? I list 40 items a week. I don't do daily goals, do weekly goals. I don't list every day. Certain days I do, I work on other things like creating content, like doing live thrifts like this for you um, and whatever. So I don't get to listing. Do you resell these? Yep, everything in my cart will be resold online on eBay, Poshmark, Depop, Mercari, Grailed, and Facebook Marketplace. Um, I'm gonna go through some shoes now. Actually, I didn't do jeans at all. What am I thinking? So where's gonna be the cream of the crop? We'll start with the bigger sizes. These are all medium, smalls. Are you seeing slow sales? I see slow sales for clothing every summer. So this is the technically my sixth summer. Oop, pardon me. Oh, thank you. Sorry, backing up the wagon here. This is technically my sixth summer. I started July of 2018. And it's always a little bit slower during those summer months because the same as retail stores. People aren't going into retail stores, shopping malls and buying clothes as often. They're on vacation, their kids are out of school, they're busy, so. We're actually walking into right now, this week and next week are the two biggest, two of the three biggest vacation weeks of the year. Christmas is the biggest vacation week of the year for people taking time off of work. The 4th of July week typically is too. And since 4th of July falls on a Tuesday this year, a lot of people are taking this week off. They have next Tuesday off anyway. So they're just taking an extra PTO day on Monday and they're getting a big long, what is that, 12 total days, seven? Yeah, I think you end up getting 12 total days, including weekends if you do it that way. So a lot of people on vacation. And you know what? They all come into Asheville. <laughs> a lot of traffic coming into town this past weekend. Every day this past weekend too. They came in Friday for the weekend and then even on Sunday they were still pouring in because now they have the whole week off and they're coming here. No Facebook, um, uh, no FBA or FBM, Amazon, nope. A lot of people do that, I don't. It's a cool way to do business, not the way I do it. Uh, check if that bike is Schwinn though. I'll check the bike for you. I'll check the bike. A lot of them are coming here to, yeah, to Hilton Head, I believe it. Um, I believe it got a friend right now who's up in Myrtle Beach. It's like a vintage bike here. What do they want? 25 bucks? I don't really know anything about vintage bikes. That's definitely not my game. More vintage bikes. They're kind of cool looking. $75. $75. Yeah, I mean... The notion that like Goodwill is just for poor people is kind of crazy because like I don't know what poor person is going to come in here and buy a vintage bike for $75. Then they're going to have to go and put a new chain in and probably a new derailleur and uh, it's got to have two flat tires and look at all that warrant. So like, you know, the, the notion and it's all rusted and stuff too. Those bolts are probably all seized. This will be fun. Ready? So yeah, I mean, the idea that this is for poor people is just kind of crazy when they can go to like, and get a Huffy brand new uh, for a hundred bucks or something. Kids little play set. What do we got here? 25 bucks on that. Nice painting. What do we want in the painting? $25 on the painting. Look at these old tower speakers. What do they want on those? They're Samsungs. 
there a price tag? I don't see a price tag. Oh well. It's like a golf club case. Tour tough, yep, golf club case. Anybody know about this brand here for a golf club case? It's a hard golf club case. Looks like an older model. It's got really yellow out, like uh, tickets on there. Baggage tickets, that's a really old baggage ticket. Super yellowed out, so it's obviously very old. So tour tough golf case. Any idea on these? Some golf cases, these hard travel golf cases can go for a lot of money. I just don't know if an old one like this has any cachet. Tour tough golf case, if anyone feels like looking something up. Samsung, nice. Felix, buy it. None sold, one listed for 63. Thank y'all for that. I don't know if there's like, uh, if there's any vibes for like, does somebody want a vintage golf case, like travel case? I think they'd probably want like a new one. Then like, hey, look at this vintage golf case I have. It goes in the airplane. What clothes brands sell best? I got a lot of clothes brands that sell best. Over a thousand videos over the past three years here on TikTok. So got to look beyond the brand. Here's a Nike. This one might go. So it's not just about the brand. It's about the style, the pattern, the material, the condition, the age, and the size. So the Nike joggers are a good seller right now. Golf club is club golf is the golf bag I always look for. Those sell great. Club golf, club golf. I don't know if I know that one. Club golf, team golf. You mean team golf? I don't know about club golf. Can't picture that one right now. Those pants will be four ninety nine. They're in pretty good shape. I think this little stain will come out. Although usually stains travel in packs, in gangs, but I think that'll come right out. It just looks like it's a surface mark. But I always get worried when I see one because they're wild. How much would you list the joggers for? I think that's probably like a low 20s, 20 to 25. Chad's World is in the house. Is that the Chad's World? Thank you for the follow, Billy. And I appreciate all the OGs who've just been following me for three years now. I had the three year anniversary on TikTok and Instagram. June 25th, just Sunday. Kind of crazy. I posted my, if you want to go check it out, I posted my first video yesterday. We reposted it. So y'all could see what it's like to get started. Your first bunch of videos are probably not going to be very good. <laughs> you just got to learn the craft. It's like anything else. If you were going to be a chef someday, you got to start by washing dishes and then you move up to line or move up to like fry cook and move up to, to the grill and you got to learn everything, you know? learn how to do your edits, kind of get some stage presence or uh, camera presence, build it up. It just takes time. There's no pass and go. Most people don't start off with quality videos. You got to kind of figure it out as you roll. Many of you have been reselling for a living or doing it as a side hustle for a long time. And I know you got videos in your photo roll right now. Raise your hand if you have videos in your photo roll that you haven't published because you're like, I'm not sure how to get started. I want to post these videos. I find cool stuff. I have knowledge to share. I have a story to tell. Raise your hand with an emoji down below if you're one of those people that you got videos. You've literally recorded them at the thrift store or at your house. Let me know. Did you pick these up, uh, Eric's in the house? Did you pick these up, Eric? Adidas. They're not vintage or anything. Size large, men's, track pants with the newer logo. Did you pick those up, Andrew, 499? Or ask, I meant to ask uh, Eric, but I'll ask Andrew too since I just did. Can someone look out? I'm stranded. He's... Hey, 
I haven't started drifting yet. Oh, sorry, I thought you were a different. I thought you were a big E, Eric. Sorry. <laughs> Jue is a volunteer in the thrift store. BKE Peyton. I like picking up BKE. This looks like a women's pair of jeans. Universal fit mid rise ankle. Let's see what the size is on these. Interested though. Okay. Sold full time and is a side hustle for the last 15 plus years. Love it, Matt B. Honest that you were, but I would trust my opinion on pants. <laughs> so these are women's size 32, so it's a bigger size in women's jeans, which is good. So he's got a raw hem, and it looks like some intentional wear on the bottom. They do have the stains, though, too. I don't mind distressing, but stains aren't as cool. Yeah, stains on the back, too. Distressing's fine. Holes in the knees and stuff is cool. People like that. Some people look for that stuff, especially in a brand like BKE. Distressing can be actually a good thing. But in this case, with these stains and stuff, I'm going to put this pair of women's BKEs back. I do like picking up BKE jeans. Ooh, I like picking these up, too. So here's a pair of Polo Ralph Warren jeans. Polo Jeans Company, there we go. So this is an older model. You can tell they got that like wider straight leg fit. Nice pickup here. Looks like they're in good shape. What do we got for a size? 36 by 32 RL easy fit. Decent pickup there. I'm gonna pick those up. Love the fading, like those lines there. Nice fade on the knees too. No staining. Even with a little heel drag, we'd pick this up, but there's no heel drag at all. Nice, we'll grab those. Into some Levi's now, here we go. So I do buy and sell a lot of Levi's. People always ask me, what numbers do you pick up? I pick up all of them. But bigger sizes definitely do better. And remember, I'm paying $4.99 for jeans. If you're paying $8 or $10, it's a different ball game altogether. Levi's basically become a very tough market. This is an older tag too. We can actually date this pair of jeans. Whether I pick them up or not, we'll go through this like teaching moment here and date these jeans. Nice pair, I love Levi's, yeah. Definitely a tougher game if, if jeans are $10 or $8 at your thrift store when they're five, I can pick up a lot of Levi's. They don't sell really fast in most cases, but um, I typically get between 20 and $29. The bigger size is closer to 29. So I'm trying to date these. Let me see if I can get this tag laying right. Let's see. I actually don't know the date on these ones. I think this is a, the way that you read this. Is this an 09? That doesn't make sense, does it? Because it's got this tag, so that shouldn't be 09. I think it's fall 09. I thought this tag was older than 09. Yeah, that's how I'm confused by the, the 0909, the September 09. I'm confused by that with this tag. Shouldn't this tag, I thought this tag ended in like 03, 04. I know sometimes, you know, they faded it out over time, but it's a bummer. Lucky brand more like sucky brand. I sell Lucky Brand. Um, a lot of wear on these. These are a modern tag. I mean, sure, they're 14 years old. Probably gonna pick them up anyway, although there is some stains and stuff. I don't mind the fading. Some people actually look for that. I just don't like the stains. They'll still sell. It just slows them down a lot. So I'm probably gonna put this pair of 505s back because not only that, it's it's a reverse size, is what I refer to it. So it's uh, longer than it is wide, so 34, 36. I'm gonna go ahead and put these ones back. Um, one thing to, to pay attention to, and a lot of people aren't necessarily thinking about, is that right now we are actually pretty darn close to good jean season. For me, jeans pick back up in September. They go busy for me until about mid-April. So jeans are busy in April until about mid-April, then they slow down. I should say hi, by the way, too. Missed the opportunity to say hi to everybody. Thanks for hanging out. This is a lot of fun. I try to get, like, the man behind the mask, so to speak. I know we do a lot of POV stuff here, but appreciate y'all hanging out. This is a lot more fun. 
when I get to hang out with my friends and do this. And hopefully you learned something today. If not, hopefully you're having a good time. Just, I don't know, you wish you were thrifting, but you're stuck at work, so you're hanging out with us. Uh, appreciate it either way. Got another pair of Levi's here. 550s, same size at 34, 36, which is an okay size. Not a bad size, not a great size. I'll send you every pair of pants in my store for $50. It's an offer without enough information, brother. But I appreciate any offer you give me. Hi from Denmark, nice to meet you too. Thanks for joining, Julie. We don't often have folk from Denmark. So my guess is these will be a similar age pair of jeans. Different tag, by the way. From a similar era tag. This is not the most modern tag. So these are 07, 11. So these are July of 2011. I didn't know they were still making this tag in 2011 either. Very confused today. All right, what do we got here? Got some weird fading, some staining. I'm gonna leave these behind too. I have enough Levi's in the inventory to, them to pick up. Uh, like 10 year old, 12 year old Levi's that have wear and stains and just an okay size. I'm gonna put these back too. But we're getting close to that September. I mean, shoot, it's already late June. It's gonna be July here in a second. And before you know it, September is gonna be here. And to me, the the pickup that coming out of summer slowdown really starts April 15th a little bit for me. I start seeing some of the fall things start to sell. September 1, you see it even more. And then September 15th, it's like on like Donkey Kong. Using a pair of 511s, 34 by 32, smaller size. Got a little bit of distressing. I don't see any stains. I usually don't spend this much time looking over Levi's. I make quick snap decisions, but figured I'd share some of this with you. So this is a more modern tag on this. I don't know what they call it. I call it the triple tag, but I know there's a better term for it. And we can date these ones too. This one's that CW number. So these are 0619. This is a four year old pair of jeans, but man, someone wore the heck out of these. And they got some stains and stuff. And um, I'm gonna pass on these two. So again, it's the whole formula. It's the age of it. It's the size of it. It's the number. It's the condition. Um, you're looking at all those things, and you're looking at the season too. This is a good time, I think, to stock up on jeans. But I'm gonna pass on those two. I'm gonna keep those polo ones. So anyway, we had the chance to scoop like one, two, three, what four different pairs of Levi's. But I'm actually gonna pass on all of them figured I'd at least pick up a couple. But, oh, well, I get more opportunities, more Levi's. Man, I think these are all donated by the same person. They're all 30, so that's 34 by 36, 550. That's 550, 34 by 36. That's 550, 34 by 36. 505, 34 by 36. And a Savain. <laughs> Is there more of these? Here's another one, 34 by 34, 501s. That might be an older tag. We'll take a look at those. Great fading on those, look at that. Yeah, check those out in a second. Let's see what else we got here. Those are George jeans. Sometimes I'll just look at, if it doesn't have a tag back here, you can just look at that front snap and see what they are real quick. 505, 34 by 32s. So, it's a lot of those to choose from, 505, 36 by 30. So this is donated by somebody different. These are actually in pretty good shape. Little rip right there. Why list? Why list? Why list were? These are the 501, so these are the button flies. Sorry about the little interruption in the feed right there. I am gonna pick these ones up. I might pick up those 501s. We'll look at that in a second. How do you know how to find out how much? Uh, you go, in, go into the eBay mobile app and just search for the item. So I could search for 
Levi's 505, 36 by 30. I'd filter that search for used. I'd filter that search for sold items. And that's gonna show me on eBay what is sold for the last 90 days. And it will show me the sold prices for those items. So that's how I can really quickly determine market rate. I can do that on Poshmark as well. I can do it on Grailed as well too, to get market values on those platforms as well. It's a pair of George jeans again, Bullhead. What are these? Big Star Matty Boot. Anyone know about this brand? Big Star? Doesn't sound familiar to me. Big Star, is that nothing? Look at all these uh, stitching stuff there. A lot of embroidered stitching stuff. Why sell on eBay? Why give you, why sell on eBay? Why give, why private info? I sell on eBay to pay my bills. I share info to help other people do the same thing to get out of tough financial situations or maybe to get away from a job that they don't like and a boss that's driving them crazy. I think that answers your question. Big stars are a great find. They're cool looking, huh? That stitching looks good on the Big Star. Big Stars are a great brand. Cool, I didn't know this brand. I don't think I've come across this before. It's got a lot of things on it that make you catch your eye with the stitching, that big front button right there, embroideries, nice nice uh, like vein lines there too, good fading on the front, 20 to, 20 to 30, nice. They okay, ask for info is what we say, change it now. Looks like true religion, it does have that look, doesn't it? Thank you all for letting me know right there yes good brand are they men's or women's uh, i would assume they're men's they're called the maddie boot oh they might be women's 33r i don't know i think they're men's i think they're men's it does have a miss me look to them doesn't it where did it all go wrong right, well, appreciate everybody hanging out this is what i do is i Go to thrift stores, garage sales, even clearance sections at retail stores. I find stuff for cheap. I resell it online for a profit. That's how I pay my rent. That's how I save for my retirement. That's how I buy IPAs. So there we go, 30, 550s. Here's more of those 34 by 36 550s. So many of them are in rough shape. They really wore them out. I kind of want to buy them all, but I kind of also don't want to buy them all. Yeah, more stains. More 550, more 34 by 36, probably more stains and worn out. I don't mind the wear. I don't mind the fade. I don't even mind like some distressing and some heel drag. It's like the stains and stuff really slow these down for me. That pair is actually in decent condition. This is just fading. I don't mind the fading. i pick those ones up. Yeah, it's got some stains too. Just slows things down for me so much on those. Those are the least amount of standing though. I might still pick them up. Love the fade on that. Poshmark, Depop, Mercari, Grailed, and Facebook Marketplace. Those are the other platforms that I sell on to answer your question. Discontinued by a manufacturer. Nice. That's usually a good thing, right? A lot of jeans. It's a women's pair. Do you look up the big star before you do a look up on the big star? You think so? You think uh, the information is... Uh, little off. Here's a great brand, Mavi. I don't find these very often. Nice fade, a little bit of hole in the knee. I don't care about that too much. Sometimes people like it. Definitely a good amount of heel drag with the ripping. A little bit of staining. This has got to be borderline. A lot of heel drag there too. So the best thing to do with jeans too is not just to look up the brand, but look up the model too. That can definitely vary the value. So this one's the Zach straight leg from Mavi Jeans. It's a good brand. So if this is a, if the resale value is high enough on these, even with some like heel drag and the rip in the knee, I can still get good money for them. Assuming 
this model sells for enough money, the Zach, Mavi Jeans Zach. Thanks for the follow user. Do you wash them before you sell them? Only if they are, only if they're like dirty or have bad smells. This looks like an older Wrangler. It's got the vertical inside tag. It's a big size too, which I like, 42 by 30. This is probably like a 2000s-ish model, 47 advanced. Because it's a big size, I might pick these up. For me, big size is 38 and bigger. For men's. What's the most you'll spend on Levi's? For me, it's, I mean, everything's flat rate, five bucks. I have spent $8 for Levi's before if they're like silver tabs or vintage, but for me, it's tough getting above five on Levi's because if you price them high, like I do, they just take a little longer to sell. But maybe a big size and like a, a Y2K or something, it just depends. It's tough to ask questions about like a whole brand, especially a gigantic brand like Levi's. Those Mavis are $15 sold in better shape. Really? The Mavi Zacks are that cheap. Average $20 plus shipping. Interesting. I didn't think they'd be that cheap. Maybe that's a model that people just don't care for. Some modern Levi's. These look like a bigger size, 38 by 29. A little bit rough shape. Um, you can make money off these. There is holes right there. I'm gonna pass on those ones. There could be money to be made on those. 30 by 29, same thing, some holes. Some nice fading, couple stains. I'm gonna pass on those ones too. Man, a lot of Levi's that are just like, these are near misses for me. Some of you might pick these up and I wouldn't judge you for it. Um, we, jeans do take a little bit longer for me to list because I have to take some extra measurements. So for me, a lot of borderline jeans like this, I'm not gonna pick up. I can just find other stuff. Uh, I do pick up some beans in bigger sizes. Um, in smaller sizes, these are always a pass for me unless they're flannel lined. Sometimes I'll pick up the big sizes. At five bucks, this will probably flip into $20 plus shipping on this big size. I might pick these ones up. Just good condition, no stains. And that big size, 42, I'll go on it. Not an awesome pickup there. Definitely a borderline. You could pass on that and I wouldn't judge you for it. Maybe I should pass on it, but should be able to get about 20 bucks for shipping on those for my $5 investment. And the big size is what kind of talks me into it. If it was a smaller size, I wouldn't. Arrow Bean sells on Poshmark. There you go. Do resell toys. I don't really do a lot of toys. I haven't done some in the past. I'm no expert in toys. I'm not the right person to ask about toys. But yes, if you find the right toys, vintage toys, they can sell for sure. Blondra, thanks for the follow. It's good to have you on board. Appreciate it. And Magical Tiff 2.0. Cool name. What did we decide on this? It was just one listed at 63 bucks. What do they want? They want 15. I'm all, I'm all set on that. It's a travel golf club case. All right, let's go check out some shoes right quick. We might pass through some like kitchen wares, see if we can find some vintage kitchen. Uh, we got traffic here. Ma'am, do you mind if I slide right behind you? Sorry, it's just tight right here. Thank you. All right, so Merrells, those are in really rough shape. Great brand to look for in shoes. Look up Merrells and men's and women's. The good news with any shoe, right, is you can look up based on the model number. Every shoe, if it still has a tag in place, will have a tag on the inside that has a model number. You can look up Merrell and that model number. Find out the model name, and then you can look up the model name for that item. But Merrells are a good one to look up if you come across them. Some Sauconies can sell. These are in a little rough shape. They actually look like a, a good uh, model. 
just eyeballing them. They look like a good model, like a good modern model is the word. I'm gonna pass on those because of the condition. Most of your passes on shoes are gonna come out of condition. Jeans are aided are goodwill too, that's tough. So I probably wouldn't even look. I would look at jeans for $8, but I wouldn't look at Levi's for $8 unless they were like silver tabs or obviously vintage. I'd probably save my time and just skim right by them. Uh, here's another pair of Merrells. This is a women's pair. The right thing to do on these would be to comp, comp them based on the model. The men's typically do better than the women's for me. Uh, these are a women's size eight, which is a fine size for women's. A good size for women, actually. These are just in pretty rough shape. My guess is that this is probably a 30, 30 to thirty-five dollar shoe, maybe even twenty-five on the low end. But because of the rough shape, I'll have to price at the bottom of the market. So I'm going to pass on those ones because that means I'll be probably pricing them like twenty to twenty-five dollars. Eight's a good size. Eight and a half's a good size. Seven, seven and a half's okay too. Once you get below that, it gets tough for women. Jeez, there's another pair of Merrells. Look at this. These ones are rough too. Sorry, we're in like, we left Goodwill, we're at the playground now. So those are rough. Um, men's typically sell for a little bit more money than women's. These ones are also waterproof. I have no idea if you can hear me over the, the McDonald's play place. I always look through golf clubs. Um, I have not found a single golf club that's worth reselling since I moved to, back to North Carolina. And today is another day just like that. But that's all it takes me is literally 20 seconds to skim through those and realize there's nothing. Sometimes they'll have a bag of golf clubs that will be hanging out that they just put out. If I was gonna hit, on golf clubs in one of my Goodwills here. It would be on a bag that was just kind of standing up over here. And it might have like a good club or two in it or the whole thing might be, the whole set might be good. But for me at thrift stores, I don't often find golf clubs around here. Garage sales, yeah. I do look at tennis rackets. They have a lot of them today. And whatever that thing is. This is actually, so one thing I look for on, I'm not an expert in tennis rackets, but one thing I look for is the one piece right here. So it's not a separate piece. This is all one piece. Those typically are more valuable rackets. So this would be something I would look up. I would look up. I don't know that it's valuable and it needs a grip, but it's in okay condition otherwise. So probably, I don't know, just good condition. So I would look this one up just because it's a one piece. It's a Prince and it's a Comp XL, I guess is the model on this one. Yeah, Prince Comp XL. So I don't know what this one is worth, but this would be one that I would look up because it's that one piece. See how this one's two piece? That's a whole separate little like piece right there connecting it. I don't typically look those up like that one. One brand that I always look up is Babolat. It's a great racket brand. I'm not a professional in, uh, in tennis rackets. I might've sold six of them over the years, you know? But I always take a peek because a Babolat racket can grab you 80 to $100 if it's a good one in used condition, decent used condition. So it's worth just spinning through this section. Um, I look at uh, gloves too. This one's obviously wrecked and dried out and toasted, but I look at gloves. I look at bats too. Just a quick eyeball on those bats. There's nothing that's worth money there, but there's money in bats too. You can find $100, $200 bats used and a lot that are like in the $50 to $80 range. That head brand is a great brand. Nice. Good to know. Would you pick up Merrell's if someone used their own? Uh, I think so. I it would just, yeah, it just depends on how much the, the resale value of that, that Merrill is. If it's a high resale value and I can list it with the orthopedics that someone's gonna have to replace, 
and be at the bottom of the market for them and still make money, then sure. Uh, 14 listed, $15 and unsold. Okay, thank you, LJ. $12 on eBay on the Prince Comp Excel. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate everybody doing that. No on the prints. The head brand is a great brand. Missed some chats here. Thank you for the follow, Adrian. What golf clubs you're looking for? A whole bunch of, it's just, just um, a good way to get started with golf clubs is literally like search for, I don't know, driver uh, on eBay. Search for driver, filter it for used, filter it for sold, and then filter it or sort it. So you're looking at highest price, including shipping first. And then you can see what are the types of drivers that sell for the most money. Or you can go to a Goodwill and just start looking through golf clubs and start looking them up. There's a whole bunch of brands that are worth going. Sorry, I got cut off there for a second. Not sure why. So what I really want to do is look at some kitchenware. I honestly like really only skim things that are like electronics and things because I don't really like picking up electronics at thrift stores because they charge a lot of money for them and I don't know anything about the history of them. So they could have been dropped on their head five times, kind of like myself and they may not work at all. It's just a pain to have to pick something like that up and go home. Back into the play place again. That would be a good hat to pick up, a US Open Oakmont hat. But as you can see, that's all stained. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, let's see what we can find. Right off the bat, we found some Revere wear. You'll find these at. You find these at pretty much every thrift store in the country. Sorry, sir. All right. No lids. All the lids are over there. All right. I've got enough. All right, y'all, thanks for hanging out. That's enough for me. I gotta get out of here. Uh, it's time to go through all this stuff, see what we got. I'm gonna obviously look it over for stains and all that stuff, and I'm gonna cash out, get out of here, head home, and uh, start working on some video content and stuff for you. Appreciate everybody hanging out for a little bit today. It's a lot of fun for me. I hope it was fun for you. If you're not already following, click that follow button. I do this every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'm also live every Monday through Friday, weekdays, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. I ship out my orders so you can see exactly what I'm selling, how much it's selling for, how long it's sitting in my inventory, and then after all the fees and shipping, exactly how much I'm making off all those products. So it's a great place to ask questions. It's a great place to talk to other resellers that gather, we sip coffee. We just talk shop, talk life, and it's fun. I also do that live at 10 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube as well. So if you're watching this over on YouTube, you can watch the live starting at 10 o'clock. It's kind of the early bird special at 9.30 over on TikTok. Appreciate everybody hanging out. Thanks, LJ. Appreciate you. I will drive safe. Thanks, Brooke. See y'all later. See you tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern. This whole recording will be up on YouTube tomorrow at